not only the work of the ministry, but I have to give you a story. Because when the government policy was declared, there was objection, even from within the government civil service. As a matter of fact, the leading um, public servant at the time went public and said it would not work. Uh, but we were of the view that it's not a matter of if, it was an imperative that the issue of plastics, especially single-use plastic bag, had to be addressed. I want to recognize one of the individuals in Antigua and Barbuda that has kept a sharp focus on the issue of um, the environment and has been a tower of strength in putting us on this path, and that is Mr. Eli Fuller, who is in the audience. I know he doesn't like to mention, but in fact, he has to be recognized for the role he has been playing for, for many, many years. I also wish to recognize uh, Mr. Barrett as um, the operator of the largest supermarket in Antigua and Barbuda, and he too came on board with other uh, private sector individuals. And I'm pleased that you're here again, Mr. Barrett, because it shows or demonstrates that you understand the success of eliminating single-use plastics is only one round. There are many more rounds to go. The fact is that um, over the last several months, I have to make an admission here, I became a bit stuck because we discuss in the Ministry of Health next steps. It's good that we can boast that we have successfully eliminated uh, single-use plastic bags and polystyrene. But we didn't believe that we had the technical capacity to go to the next step. And that next step is a policy of the government that simply states that all waste should be considered resource. All waste on the island should be considered resource. It means that we are thinking of zero waste. But the idea of putting the necessary infrastructure, the necessary capacity for zero waste was not within our grasp. And then we heard of IUCN and its capacity being the longest serving environmental serving organization in the world and the largest. So when they came to my office and they outlined the program, I said I could not believe this is a gift. <laughs> this is a gift because we have been wondering where we were going to get that capacity. So I want to say to you today that you are welcome. And we are look, looking forward to the partnership in ensuring that we take the next step that is critical, not only for Antigua and Barbuda, but for the world. We believe that we have a responsibility to the world, all nations. It's not a matter of saying keep Antigua clean and keep the coastline of Antigua clean. It's a view that we have that we have an international obligation that must be fulfilled. And as a, as a result of your presence, I think that we are far ahead um, of many of the islands in the Caribbean in terms of single-use plastic bags and styrofoam, but that is not as far as we would wish to go. We would wish to have a holistic approach to the elimination of plastics, and also a holistic approach so far as fossil fuels are concerned. This government has made another important decision that you should be aware of, and that is by 2030, we anticipate that we should go through the complete transition from fossil fuel to renewable energy. And that is our ambition. Now, of course, as it was in the elimination of plastic bags, so it is in the transition from fossil fuel to renewable energy, something called inertia and resistance. 
This is the fight the Minister of Health, uh, Wellness and the Environment has to undertake. But let me say publicly, it's a fight I welcome. Because it is what we need to do for our people and for the global commitment that we have made at the United Nations. And so far as the, the transition from fossil fuel is concerned, let me just share a tidbit with you. By 2021, we anticipate that we'll be able to generate approximately 25 megawatts of renewable energy between the use of, uh, between uh, solar energy and wind energy. If we are able to do that, we would satisfy all the electricity needs that are required by the government of Antigua and Barbuda. That will leave approximately another 30 um, megawatts that we need to uh, change from fossil fuel to renewable energy. This is the position of the Ministry of the Environment, the Department of the Environment. We know it's not going to be an easy uh, way ahead, but we are ready to stand up so that the right thing is done, not only for the people of Antigua and Barbuda, for the global health of all, the, all, all nations, for the health of all nations, and um, respect the planet. Now, I want to thank the government of Norway, uh, who is also partnering with IUCN uh, to undertake this project. As you know, it was the government of Norway that financed the Plato concert here in Antigua and Barbuda, which was a tremendous success. But what is the true story is this. The true story is this. And I'm very, very happy to say this in Antigua and Barbuda. I want to declare publicly that I have confidence in the people of Antigua and Barbuda that they're fully on board with the direction of this government's policy. The fact is, there could be many doubters. But we have more people advocating good environmental practice than those who are doubting that we should go in this direction. It is a credit to the people of Antigua and Barbuda. There are many island states right now that are struggling to go through this conversion, to get their citizens to embrace the responsibility of preserving the environment. I dare say not so in Antigua and Barbuda. I think that we have turned the corner in terms of the citizenry and their consciousness of the importance of preserving our environment. And I want to commend the people of Antigua and Barbuda, and for the record, I would appreciate if you give yourself a round of applause. We here have also embarked on national efforts to demonstrate that the holistic approach embraces everyone, every community. As I stand here, the Ministry of Health, in collaboration with other ministries, have undertaken an island-wide cleanup of derelict vehicles in Antigua and Barbuda. And I know that is welcomed by many of the uh, uh, communities of Antigua and Barbuda. Because interestingly, we cannot separate the effort to clean up from the issue of health. The inextricably linked. The fact is that we have millions of, um, of tires all over Antigua and Barbuda that provide homes for mosquitoes and the spread of dengue. We have thousands of abandoned cars that are homes to mosquitoes and rodents. And so when we think of our work in the environment, we should also think of the importance of our work in the context of national health. They cannot be separated. 
And that is why we need to look at, take a holistic approach and be committed strategically how we overcome these challenges in Antigua and Barbuda. And as indicated before, the presence of IUCN, the meeting I had in my office with representatives from IUCN was very heartwarming because as a small country, it is sometimes very difficult to get the technical competence as part of your uh, bureaucracy. And your presence here today cannot be overstated in terms of its importance. I want to uh, assure you that we appreciate your presence, and I want to assure you that there is not no challenge that we will face, we will not undertake and overcome. And I wish to say to the participants, I'm very pleased to see the numbers. And you are now, um, by declaration, advocates of the environment. You're by declaration the eyes and ears of the nation of Antigua and Barbuda. And do not underestimate the importance of the contribution that you're making today. It's not only the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and the Environment and the cabinet of Antigua and Barbuda, but it's the entire citizenry of Antigua and Barbuda and those who reside here and visit here. So good, good morning again, and thank you all for coming, and I look forward to a productive workshop. May God bless you all.